So, on this video, we're going to learn about the equilibrium constant. We use the capital K for the equilibrium constant. From the last video about the equilibrium state, where the forward reaction occurs at the same rate as the reward reaction, the equilibrium concentration depends really on how the reaction is started. The position of equilibrium can vary, which means that the concentration of substances involved in the reaction can change according to how you, the reaction is started, whether you start the reaction with only reactants or with only products, or you have everything at the starting point. The fact that we know that the reaction reach equilibrium is that the concentration of all substances will no longer change. They will remain constant after equilibrium has been reached. So if you remember these plots of the experiment of the reaction between carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, which produce uh, methanol here. Experiment number one, start with only reactant. Experiment number two, start with only products, where experiment number three, we have everything at the beginning to start with. At equilibrium position, we see that the amount of substance like hydrogen gas here is different from here and different from here. After equilibrium has been reached, every substance concentration remain unchanged. So we know that from this point, this means the equilibrium point. I said last video already that if we take the concentration of substance and put them into ratio, we will get a particular ratio of substance concentration that give us a constant value. And this ratio is called the equilibrium constant, or K. Let's see what is that particular ratio of substance concentration. If this reaction our experiment will carry out in the 10 liter container. The question is, what is the equilibrium constant of K for this reaction? If we take all the value of the equilibrium concentration in mole per liter, take the value from experiment number one, two, three, we have carbon monoxide, hydrogen gas, and methanol, we already see that the number are different in all experiment. However, if we take the law of mass action, take the ratio of concentration of product on top, divided by concentration of reactant, and each substance concentration, we rate to the power of the stoichiometry coefficient. So methanol here has coefficient equal to one. Carbon monoxide coefficient is one as well. So the power here, both of them refer to the power of one. Where the hydrogen gas has stoichiometry coefficient is two. So we raise concentration of hydrogen as two. This particular ratio gives us all the same value, about 14.5. And this ratio is given as the equilibrium constant Kc. So from the result of uh, previous experiments, we can make the general expression of Kc for any chemical reaction. If we have a 
reaction between A, B, and produce C, D, like this. A, B are reactant, and C, D are products. Stoichiometry coefficient of each substance are shown here. A, mole for reactant A, B, mole for reactant B, C, mole for product C, and D, mole for product D. The general expression of Kc defined as the quotient or the ratio of concentration of the product on top and reactant below. And if you have more than one reactant like this, you have A and B, the concentration of all reactants are multiplied together as well as the concentration of the product are multiplied together, all of them. Each concentration raised to the power of stoichiometry coefficient. And you don't need to write down the number one. The concentration of each substance are expressed as molarity or mole per liter. And we used to bracket to represent the molarity unit of concentration. So this is the example. If you have a question asking you to write the equilibrium expression for the following reactions, this is the KC that you would get. Look at this. We have the concentration of product, product on top, and the concentration of reactant below. And we use concentration in molarity, so we use the bracket. We don't need to write down the state of matter in the expression for K. C, for K. Remember that each concentration has to raise by the coefficient of each substance. So this is 4, 6 for water, and 4 again for ammonia, and 7 for oxygen. As we get the expression for equilibrium constant K, like this ratio, the product are on top, reactants are below. If we get the concentration at equilibrium of each substances and put them into this expression and calculate the value. The value of K would tell us about the position of equilibrium. In other words, how much of the concentration of product relative to that of reactant. So we can get the relative amount of substances from the value of K. So for example, if we have two reactions as shown here, the first reaction, nitrogen react with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide, has Kc equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 30 at 25 degrees Celsius. This is a very low value of Kc, has the power of negative 30 compared to the Reaction between carbon monoxide and chlorine to produce this substance this is called phosgene. This has the Kc at 25 degrees Celsius equal to 4.57 times 10 to the power of 9. This is a very large value. So compare between these two values of Kc, what do they tell us? They tell us that the first reaction, this equilibrium that has a very low value should lies to the left or to the reactant side, which means that the concentrations of reactants are high at equilibrium. Compared to the second reaction, the Kc is a very large number, which means that this equilibrium lies to the right or to the product side of the reaction. In other words, we can say that the concentration of product is very high at equilibrium.
Now let's have a look at the reaction that involve gases. We can also give the expression for equilibrium constant using the partial pressure of gas instead of the concentration in molarity. Let's see the general reaction of A, B produce C and D. These are gases. So we can have the expression for K. This time we will use K subscript P that refer to pressure instead of the C which refer to concentration. The pattern of the equilibrium constant remain the same where we have the ratio of partial pressure. We put partial pressure of product on top. We put partial pressure of reactant below. Each of the partial pressure still raise to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. Uh, we use the just the simple bracket rather than the square bracket because as I told you earlier, the square bracket here we refer to as the concentration in molarity. We, if we use the partial pressure, we do not have to use that square bracket anymore. So the relationship between Kp and Kc can be shown by this equation. Kp is equal to Kc multiplied by the gas constant temperature raised to the difference in the total number of mole of gas. Delta N of gas here is calculated from the total number of mole of gas on the product side minus the total number of mole of gas on the reactant side. And R is equal to 0 0.08 to 1 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. And of course, you must use temperature in Kelvin unit. As you see here, Kp and Kc will not be equal to each other unless we have a special case when the other end of gas is zero. If the other end of gas is zero, in other words, the total number of mole of gas on both sides are the same, this would be zero. Anything raised to zero would become one, and that would make Kp equal to Kc. That is the only case that can happen. Otherwise, the value of Kc will be different to that of Kp. Now let's see the example on how do we go by, by this Kc and Kp thing. If you have a question like this one, the following reaction at 298 Kelvin has concentration equilibrium constant. This is Kc equal to this 4.67 times 10 to the power of 13. The question is, what is the partial pressure equilibrium constant? In other words, what is the value of Kp? So we have this reaction and the value of Kc. We need to use the relationship of Kc and Kp from the previous slide like this. Remember, Kp is equal to Kc multiplied by this RT raised to the other end of gas. Now identify from the question what have we got. We have the value of Kc. So we can substitute here. We already know the temperature, which we can substitute here. What we need to do is find out the value of delta N of gas. So delta N of gas is calculated to be 2 minus the summation of 2 plus 1. Where are this number come from? Look at this. Remember, delta N of gas is the total number of mole of gas on the product side, which is 2, minus the total number of gas on the reactant side. We have two reactants here. So we take number 2 
and number one here. So we get the value of delta N of gas equal to minus one. Now we know everything, we substitute all the value that we know from the equation into this equation. And we get the Kp as an answer. So you have to make sure that you put all this number correctly in your calculator and you would get the correct answer. The last uh, topic about the con equilibrium constant is the heterogeneous reaction. This means the reaction that show more than one phase of substance. In other words, the reaction involves pure liquids or solid. The equilibrium constant expression for this kind of reaction we do not include the terms for any reactants or product that present as pure solid or pure liquid because we think that their concentration do not change in the reaction. So for example, if you have the reaction of calcium carbonate in equilibrium with calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas, calcium carbonate and calcium oxide both are in the solid form. So the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction does not include the terms of calcium carbonate or include the term of calcium oxide. We only put the concentration or partial pressure of carbon dioxide into the expression for K. So the Kc would be equal to concentration of carbon dioxide raised to 1 and of course Kp is equal to partial pressure of carbon dioxide raised to 1 as well. So make sure that you know all this uh, how to write expression for equilibrium constant. This is the summary of this video. If you have the equation in equilibrium, you have reactant A and reactant B react to produce product C and product D. You can write expression for K in terms of concentration like this and in terms of partial pressure like this. Product on top, reactant below. And don't forget to rest each concentration or partial pressure with the stoichiometry coefficient. And of course, do not include the terms for any pure solid or pure liquid. Finally, use this equation to calculate between Kp and Kc. And don't forget this difference in the number of mole of gas, we use the total number of mole of, the, of gas on the product side minus the total number of mole of gas on the reactant side. Okay, go and review all you have learned and try to practice and check your understanding. I see you next topic. Okay.